All right, guys, what's up? Welcome to another live stream. Happy Sunday. Today, we're talking mostly about medical school and residency interviews because um, obviously this is the final step of the application process for both med school and residency applicants. And it's easy for us to focus on the early parts, the application, the hard objective components like your MCAT, GPA, your USMLE scores, but even if you're an amazing applicant on paper and you have amazing letters of recommendation and all that stuff, then you know an interview can still make or break whether you end up at a program. So since we're in the middle of the season, I figure we'll cover this topic, answer some of your questions about it. And as always, you know the uh, channel members get priority with their questions. You guys can send them in the chat and uh, we'll do our best to answer them. All right, so first up, let's talk about the interview timeline. So for medical school, we'll talk about medical school and then residency. So for medical school, generally speaking, interview invites are sent out no earlier than August in most instances. Um, and you'll be getting some in September and, and onwards as well. Um, and then interviews last several months all the way up even through spring. Um, and usually when you receive that interview invite, you get a list of dates to choose from. And there is a bit of a strategy into, as to how you want to schedule your top schools versus your not as, the schools that you're not as excited about. Because if you really want to go to program A, you probably shouldn't have program A be your very first interview because you're, you're probably going to learn some things during that first interview. But you also don't want it at the very end. So you want it uh, probably in the first half, but not your first or second interview if that makes sense. Um, part of that is the rolling admissions because if you do it later and later, then you the way that rolling admissions work is as seats get filled, there are fewer spots available. Um, so want it, it's, it's, you're in a stronger position if you interview early. And so now as for residency, essentially uh, applications are submitted sometime in September and then soon after that interview invites are sent out. It's gonna depend a little bit on your specialty um, like I know Plastics did most of their interviews a few in November, but it was mostly like December, January, and then a few in February. Um, Plastics is a smaller specialty. Larger specialties tend to spread them out a little bit more. Um, and then unlike med school where you can get multiple acceptances, there's of course match day in March, open an envelope if you forgot where you went based on your rank list and such. Um, and now even though you don't have rolling admissions with residency, you still do want to keep in mind that it's advantageous to be a little bit earlier um, than later in the process. All right. Is audio good, video good? Mm -hmm. right. Cool. Um, welcome, welcome everyone. So for those who are just joining us, we are doing live stream mostly focused on interviews med school and residency interviews just because that's the time of the season. But if you guys do have other questions, as always, leave them down in the, uh, in the comments. <clears throat> and then I, so we're putting them, like, I think we should find them. Yeah, I'll put them Cool. Solid. All right. So let's talk about tips. Four, scheduling interviews for both med school and residency. Um, so, yeah, like I said earlier, you don't want to schedule at your top choice program early on because you have things to learn. You need to get into the groove. You're, you're not going to come out swinging in most instances. You're not going to come out swinging and like nail your interviews the very first, the very first uh, school you attend. So it's generally beneficial to start off with a lower tier or like a program that you're not as excited about and... Um, and then you save the ones that you care about more for, you know, your, your, maybe your third interview or a little bit later on. Um, that allows you to get a better feel for the process. You're going to be a little bit more relaxed. Um, similarly, don't schedule your top interviews last because of the rolling admissions process. Because the later you schedule your interview, your odds are theoretically lower. So you want to find the sweet spot where you have a couple interviews under your belt and you feel comfortable. 
um, but you're also relatively early on in the process. Um, next tip is keeping an open schedule because you're not gonna get that much flexibility with interview dates. It depends on the program, and then if you're looking at residency, it depends on the specialty. Um, smaller specialties, as an example, will have very few dates to choose from. They may even give you just one date, one or two dates. So larger programs will, or larger specialties will generally have more interview dates because they're interviewing more candidates. But um, for both residency and for med school, you want to have a pretty open schedule and be flexible because you're not sure when you're going to have to be at different parts of the country. Um, yeah, avoid having you know other commitments like weddings and stuff that might be in the middle of your interview season. Um, another tip is scheduling your interviews together. And a lot of people don't really talk about this, but kind of clustering them up based on geographic location is going to make your life a lot easier, not only from time, because the time of flying from New York to California, then back to New York, then to Nevada, then back to New York, then to Arizona, then back to New York, is, um, is obviously going to be it's more costly and it takes a lot more time versus if you're able to cluster. Sometimes it's not possible. I talked about this in one of my videos, how I had to go to Ohio like three separate times for the, the three plastics residency programs there because um, the, the dates just didn't line up when I was interviewing. So not ideal, but whenever possible you want, like if I could just do one trip in Ohio and then stay in Ohio for all three interviews and then fly back to California, that would have been ideal. you have any questions coming in? Guys, thanks for joining us. Again, send your questions in. I have them at the bottom. Yeah, just write down your questions from all the community before. Oh, 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 oh. Jayanth Totlani asks, most of my medical school interviewers grilled me pretty hard, but I've heard residency interviews are more relaxed. Is that true and can you expand on that? Um, I would say it depends. It definitely depends. I've, I would say even for medical school, they're not all gonna necessarily grill you, it depends on the program. Um, so one thing, this reminds me of a, of a separate point, one thing to keep in mind is that you may not realize this, but a lot of programs, before you even get there, they have an idea as to how interested they are in you as a candidate. And they may schedule multiple interviews and you may be like, hey, how come my friend only has two interviews and I have to do three interviews? That's because interviews are, are stressful. You may be like, oh man, this is not ideal. But oftentimes when you are doing that third interview, that extra interview that other people don't have to do, it's literally just the faculty trying to sell you on the city and the program and trying to convince you to come there because then you're a strong candidate that has options. So keep that in mind. Um, some med medical schools, it's going to depend on the interviewer. So you're going to have some chill ones, you're going to have some not so chill ones. One thing that they will love to grill you on though is your research, especially if you have, um, if you have research on your application, you need to be able to talk about it you know, through and through because um, not having a, a good grasp of that is going to be a red flag essentially our residency interviews more relaxed i would say it depends on the specialty so um like emergency medicine interviews are going to be more relaxed than <clears throat> general surgery interviews as an example but i've had i had interviews when i was doing plastics that were chill and some that were not so chill and it's just like uh some of them were fun they, they weren't chill, but they were fun. I know at one program, um, I had origami listed on my on my app, and because uh, I've liked doing origami ever since I was a kid. And the interviewer had me make origami stuff while I was answering questions about my research projects, just to see if I could like I had the mental bandwidth to do multiple things. And, and if you're in the OR, then like on an away rotation, they'll do the same thing where they will ask you to. Um, talk like while you're suturing or while you're not tying, talk about something that is complex and that is intellectually demanding. So um, 
Lovna Pathan asks, can you talk about research in med school and how many papers need to be published? Um, research is, is an asset and it's not required, right? But especially with US Assembly stuff only going past four, it's even more important now than it was in the past. And the more stuff you have, the better it's gonna look, but then you don't wanna just have a lot of fluff, a lot of just like case reports, things like that. So we have a research course that is gonna be coming out and we talk a lot about it, A to Z, and we work with some, we have a couple experts who are very prolific. I talk about my own experience as well, how I got a lot of publications, etc. All right, Div Divinity Seal, who is a channel member, thank you, Divinity Seal. What's something that applicants might think of as impressive or smart to say in an interview, but actually comes across as a red flag for interviewers? That's a good question. The first thing that comes up is when people do those mission trips overseas and they talk about how they like did X, Y, and Z. It's like, oh yeah, I was like, I'm a pre-med and I was, I had the scalpel in my hand and I was doing X, Y, and Z. And it's like, uh, that's not necessarily um, going to put you in the best light. There's, there's a lot of, I mean, that's the ethical gray area when you have these people who are underqualified doing this medical volunteerism and, um, yeah, that I would say is the most, that one comes up a lot, actually. That's a very good question, Divinity Seal. Thank you. Um, any tips on how to sell yourself in a residency interview without being too cocky? This is from Pris CE. Um, the difference between cockiness and confidence. Um, Where'd that question go? I should press C. There you go. Those interviews without being too cocky. Uh, I guess it's a fine line. I'm trying to think of what the what the actual like. You can be confident and sure of yourself, and when asked questions, answer them in a in a truthful way without kind of boasting and without beating your chest, right? Um, so it's like, hey, you know, it's very impressive that you were able to publish X number of publications in just a couple of years, you know, if you say like, yeah, I'm pretty great, <laughs> that's gonna be, that's like probably not the best way to, to do things. But uh, if you just, hey, you know, I was, you know, I was working hard, but I was very fortunate to, you know, work with a, a great team as well. And you're kind of like also sharing the, uh, the praise with others that um, are also deserving of that, then that's usually a pretty safe bet. All right, so. So let's talk about virtual versus in-person interviews. So this question comes up a lot. Um, so essentially, if you're given the choice between, there's like pros and cons, right? So if you're given the choice between in-person and virtual, with virtual interviews, it's a lot easier to schedule and coordinate, obviously, because you're not having to travel across the country. Um, it's cheaper because airplane tickets, lodging, uh, the various costs, transportation, food, all that stuff, you are going to save if you don't have to travel. But then there's also a lot of cons. Um, you may not get as much insight into the city, the culture, um, the program, the medical school residency. And sure, you can like talk to the people on Zoom or on whatever video platform it is, but it's different than actually being there. It's definitely very different. You can see the, the hospital, the campus, the actual facility that you're going to be in. Um, you may see photos, you may see some videos, but again, it's, it's um, different than actually being there. Um, you're not gonna have as many opportunities to interact with faculty and students and ask questions. And if you're choosing virtual over in person, then um, some may say like, oh, hey, it comes across as you not being as interested in the program. Um, so in terms of, in terms of how to prepare for interviews, in terms of how to prepare for interviews, you wanna have a lot of those common questions just lined up already. Why did you choose medicine? Why did you choose a specialty? Why this program? Things like that. You know, tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself is a very common one. Like have that, like practice that. Um, and have, you wanna, you wanna keep it not too long. You know, a minute or two is a good length. If you're going five minutes, that's too long. If you're going just 20 seconds, then that's too short. Um, so I also recommend having like a cheat sheet. So for things that are more complicated, when I was applying as an example, 
it was very important to know about uh, Obamacare and knowing the pros and cons and what's changed and what's not. That like having that on a cheat sheet that I brought with me, a physical paper cheat sheet that I brought with me at every interview and I would review in the hotel the day before or whatever, that was helpful. Um, if you need that for your research projects, that's also helpful to know your projects inside and out, especially if you have a lot and you start confusing them, then even more important to have some notes or a cheat sheet ready on hand. Tips for meet and greets before residency interviews. How casual to dress, what to expect. Oh, there have been some horror stories at, at meet and greets. Do not get sloshed. Do not get way too drugged. I mean, this is a, a professional interview, so like, uh, if sometimes we'll have the meet and greet at a brewery, right? But do not get hammered and start dancing on the table. And like, not a good look, man. Not a good look. Um, yeah, there's some funny stories from the, the interview trail. Um, the attire, they will generally, they will generally tell you what the attire is, but business casual is a safe bet. That's essentially what most of the meet and greets were. So business casual, um, and then just like expect to just meet other applicants and usually just other, um, residents. Sometimes there are faculty, but it's pretty casual. You still have to remember that you're at the interview, like our... My program would ask us after the meet and greet, like, hey, you know, what did you think of, of the various candidates and uh, anyone that stuck out, things like that. So do not, uh, do not think that, oh, I'm just hanging out. I can drop four letter words and get hella drunk and, you know, act crazy and all that stuff. How do you answer what are your weaknesses question? This is from Jayant Hotlani. Um, that's, again, this is one of those common questions that you need to prepare. So you, the, the weakness question, like there's, there's obviously the, um, the cliches of like, oh, I work too hard, or oh, I'm a perfectionist. So you want to choose weaknesses that aren't super red flags. It's like, oh, I have honesty issues. Like I, I can't be truthful. That's that's probably not the best weakness to to share, and that's also something that you should probably work on. But you want to again strengths and weakness questions. Those are the ones that you need to prepare, and you want to put something. You, you want to say something that will that is a weakness. That is a genuine, honest weakness. Um, but that you're learning from, that you're growing, that you are working on, etc. Alright guys, I'm curious, what's, what's the most challenging question that you've received on in an interview? Um, so some common ones are like, you know, why do you want to be a doctor? Why attend this medical school? Why do you study medicine? Why this specialty? Tell me about yourself, your biggest strengths and weaknesses. Where do you see yourself in five or ten years? What do you like to do for fun? What are your hobbies outside of medicine? But what are some challenging questions that you guys have received? Does my audio good? Does my echo? Audio sounds good. Cool. Are we getting some difficult interview questions or? I'm gonna start to get a few images from my phone. Um, in the meantime, waiting for some more questions. Um, we do actually have a comprehensive list of the most common med school residency interview questions on our blog, medschoolinsiders.com. And we will have those linked in the description underneath this video. Uh, one for med school and then one for residency as well. And I'll tell you some tips and tricks for, for each of those. Um, and again, you don't want to create a script that you memorize. You don't want to have like this canned response, but in your head you want to have when someone asks you, hey, what are your strengths and weaknesses? You have the five things and what you want to say about each one. 
but it's not a script that you've memorized. You just you you know the main points, and you can allow your natural language to navigate through that. Um, <clears throat> Because when it comes across as too rehearsed, it feels a little bit disingenuous, and that's not a good look. Um, oh yeah, also asking questions of the medical school or of the residency program is important because that demonstrates you have genuine interest, right? If you feel like, hey, do you have any questions for us? And you're like, nah, I'm good. That is not, that's, that's not good. So definitely have some questions that you wanna ask them um, and things that you can't just look up on, on the program's website, right? Things that that are actually, intelligent, thoughtful questions uh, that aren't just yes or no answers from the interviewer. Um, and if you're having difficulty thinking of questions, then again, we have examples um, on our blog and in our research course, but um, you can also just do more research on the program and see what comes up for you as natural questions. Another thing is body language. This is huge. So you don't want to be like slouching, crossing your arms, avoiding eye contact, things like that. You want to be confident, comfortable. You want to have um, eye contact. If you're if you're staring too much, then that comes across as kind of creepy or aggressive. If you're not making any contact at all, then that comes across as shy or not confident. Um, so or that you're intimidated or disinterested. So you want to practice. You want to practice your body language. Um, and you can do that even virtually too. You can do that like with virtual interviews with someone. And um, part of that is having you know, sitting up straight, um, using hand gestures when you speak, um, that shows your enthusiasm. It's just like a little, it's a little bit more engaging to speak with someone who's um, active in that way. You know, nodding, smiling, maintaining eye contact, things like that. Um, so some things you can do to practice would be practicing in front of a mirror. Uh, you can even record yourself on video and then watch the recording as you answer these practice questions. And um, you'll notice you'll notice things that you didn't realize you were doing. You know, any nervous tics or that you say like a lot or other things that come up that you, you may not want to actually convey in the interview. Um, obviously participating in mock interviews, we do have that on the Mental Insiders website, is also a very helpful way because then you have someone who has worked on the med school admissions committees or on the residency admissions committees and they'll tell you exactly what they're looking for and that's, like, that's as close as you can get to the real deal. Um, so mock interviews are obviously very strong. Um, the issue with just using friends or families that they don't really know, they haven't served on the ad comp, so they don't really know what to look for. And they can give general advice on some things like body language or your, um, how engaging your speech is and things like that. But there's going to be a lot of nuance there that's missed. Um, Scroll down here. All right, is it a red flag if you don't attend the meet and greet dinners and you don't drink alcohol? Definitely not a red flag if you do not drink alcohol. Um, if you don't attend the meet and greet dinners, I wouldn't say it's a red flag, but it's definitely a missed opportunity. And um, if you're able to make it, then definitely. But they understand that, hey, interview season's busy, and uh, if you aren't able to make it because you're at another interview or whatever, then that's fine. And you can just say, hey, you know, unfortunately, I'm unable to make it. I have another uh, interview I'm coming from or whatever. But um, definitely attend if you can. It is, it's a value add, not only for the people at the program to get to know you more, but then also for you to get to know them more. Because ultimately, you're going to be there for several years. So you got to you gotta be sure about your decision as to where you're going to attend. Um, have you ever met single mothers who got into competitive specialties? Um... Mothers who got into competitive specialties, sure, absolutely. Whether they're single or not, I don't remember. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely possible. Don't, don't hold yourself back thinking that it's not possible because of being a single mother. Definitely possible, 100%. Um, How would you treat a COVID patient with OMM is a question that this, that a, a viewer got. I don't know, man. I did not go to DO school. I did not learn OMM. And um, that's interesting. I'm actually curious what the OMM philosophy is on approaching something like COVID. I'm not familiar. All right. We're going to do a few more minutes, and then we're going we're gonna to end this 
this uh, live stream. So if you have questions, please keep them coming in. Um, let's see what else I got prepared for you guys. Okay, so day of the interview tips. So what to wear, obviously you wanna be uh, wearing professional clothes, conservative, um, darker neutral tones are good. Like if you're a guy, then your suit should be um, navy, charcoal, things like that. Um, possibly black, black is kind of like, black is very common, but if you ask the, um, the fashion experts, they're like, hey, black suits are only for uh, very formal like black tie events and for uh, like funerals and things like that. So you don't want to have too flashy of a tie either. You want to have, you know, kind of simple, like you don't want to be drawing attention to your attire. You want your, you want to kind of just, you, you kind of want to blend it in a way. You want to just have a, a, you know, presentable, nice fitting suit that's not too crazy. Um, and you don't need a super expensive suit. The fit is much more important than how expensive your suit is, whether it's, you know, full canvas, half canvas, fused, all that stuff. Like, if you wanna go all out and get a, a really nice suit, that's great, but it's the most important thing if you're on a budget is don't worry about that, just make sure you get one that is well-fitting. Um, it's better to have a cheap suit that's tailored well than a really expensive suit that doesn't fit you well. Treat everyone with respect. So, everyone. Okay, there are horror stories where someone's having a bad day and they're on the airplane and they're rude to someone putting their bag in the overhead compartment or whatever and turns out that person worked at the residency program or the med school, right? So be kind to everyone. It's just a good way of living life, but um, even more so with your interviews, you don't know who can influence um, your outcome. So everyone, you know, on the airport, taxi, campus, checking in, all that stuff, hotel. Um, treat everyone like they could be a program coordinator or serve on the admissions committee. Um, I'm actually curious, have you guys met anyone in your process of attending interviews that ended up being involved with the program that you weren't expecting? Let me know with a comment. Um, or in the live chat, I should say. So with those optional social events, of course, be professional and polite. Faculty are sometimes there. Um, and they will definitely be keeping note of you and watching for any red flags. Yeah, don't, don't fall into the trap of thinking that you only need to be on your best behavior during the actual interview because um, that pre-interview social is very important. Any, any negative, Im negative impressions you give will definitely be used against you. So, um, before the actual interview, do you guys, I think it was Amy Cuddy's TED Talk talking about power poses and, and body language and such. Uh, a lot of people get very nervous right before an interview and doing things like having those power poses where you, you take up more space and she, she has a few, I think one's just like standing up and like holding your arms out, like these poses that make you feel more confident um, can actually help calm your nerves and make you feel better going into the interview. So that's something that I've seen a lot of people use with great success. Um, you can even, you know, warm up your, you probably, you probably are t chatting with people and, and already being um, active socially, but if you feel the need to like warm up your vocal cords, you can go find like a bathroom or secluded area and kind of like do whatever um, practices or uh, tongue twisters or whatever to, to make sure that you don't trip yourself up while you're, you're in the interview. Um, all right. So the interview, interviews that, if you are able to approach the interview as an actual conversation rather than just you answering questions, it's gonna be much more pleasant for the interviewer, which is a good thing. You want them to think highly of you, right? And um, it just flows better. It feels better. It's more fun for everyone involved. So again, you wanna have some answers prepared, but if things come up, it's fine to just deviate and let the conversation roam to other things. Like if you have a shared interest, with Formula One, with your, um, your interviewer, it's fine to talk about that for a few minutes. You don't need to just stay, you know, super in your lane, talk super just about um, why medicine and why they like, show your personality a little bit. Talk about things that you're interested in as well as they come up naturally. Um, and obviously you wanna be asking the interviewer questions too, not, not like grilling them and like so that they're doing most of the talking necessarily, um, which actually is sometimes if you guys are really vibing, then you can be asking questions and having them talk a lot and they actually end up, people like talking about themselves or people just like talking, right? So if you do let them 
interact a little bit more rather than just asking questions, they will probably have a better impression of you. Um, now, you will have to adjust your answers and such based on the actual interviewer, based on the tone, the pacing, the vibe, the, the responses that you're receiving. So you need to know your content inside and out and then be able to adapt it based on the person who's asking you the questions. Um, yeah, by the time you are at the interview, you need to be comfortable speaking about just about all aspects of yourself inside and out, extracurriculars, research projects, and anything in between. Um, anything that's on your application is fair game to be asked. All right. Let's see what questions we got. Yeah, virtual interviews definitely do not allow you to connect as much in person. That's the question from Pris CE. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, remember, channel members get priority access with questions. And we're going to go back to the other material that we have prepared for you guys. Um, oh, this is a good one. So there's that, that uh, was it Mary Angelo quote? of people don't remember what you did or what you said, they remember how you made them feel. And um, that's a really important thing to remember because if you're able to elicit positive emotions in your interviewer, then they're gonna remember you more fondly. And remember that it's, it's a crowded field. Like a lot, of, a lot of applicants have similar experiences and similar reasons for entering medicine and similar, like a lot of things. But if you can stand out by um, being really personable and having a great interview, then that can do a lot to improve your chances. Um, if you notice that your interviewer is interested in a particular topic, don't be afraid to like lean into it, right? That's probably going to result in a better conversation. Um, and then obviously you need to pay attention to their, their tone, their body language, their expression. You need to adapt accordingly and not just um, stick to what you had preconceived in your head as to what you should be talking about. Um, focus on like getting along with them rather than just listing out your accomplishments. That makes sense. Um, and then the last tip for the actual interview is you want to be confident and comfortable and yet humble. So one common thing that I came across was talking too fast. So I just had a reminder in my head, like, you know, talk slow on YouTube videos. I also talk too fast. Maybe in this live stream, I'm talking too fast. I don't know. Um, so if you do have certain habits that come up, especially when you're like under the gun, then be mindful of them and try to try to have a reminder to to be aware of them. Um, yeah, being calm, cool, and collected. You know, some will say that oh, it's really important because it shows that you can handle the stress of being a physician or if you're you know uh, or whatever specialty. Sure, I mean, just more than that, just you want people who are confident and calm and not all over the place and, and really uh, stressed out or just easier to talk to and give you, a, they're, they're, they're more pleasant to interact with, right? So even just from the interviewer liking you, that's, that's really important. Um, after the interview, thank you emails are important. We're running out of time here, so I'm gonna keep this pretty brief. Um, letter of interest and intent, we do have some helpful blog posts on both on the website. We'll have those linked down in the description as well. Um, and the difference between the interest and intent letters as well, I'm going to use each one. So let's finish off with talking about ways to save money because this is a really, really big one that I don't think that many people don't really focus on this as much. Um, I, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is for informational purposes only. Proceed at your own risk. I found credit card churning very, very helpful and I have some videos on credit card churning. Essentially, you open up credit cards and you have to be very financially responsible. If someone is not and they do this, then it can be financially ruinous, right? So you open up credit cards, you get the points, the bonuses, et cetera, and then you use that to get flights or hotels and you save tens of thousands of dollars. Um, I have, I mean, I've been doing this for so many years, but it's probably close to 100K in terms of flights, hotels, all that stuff that I've saved over several years. During interviews, it's probably like, you know, um, several thousand dollars, but not, not tens of thousands. Um, so yeah, when I was interviewing for residency, I had, I went to 20, 20 programs and I think there were, 
you know, all of them except for one I had to travel to. Obviously, my home program I didn't have to travel to. Um, and what do I want to say about this? Um, well, for those who are new to this, so let's say you sign up for a credit card, you need to spend $3,000 in the first three months, and then you'll get 50,000 points. So first of all, you should not be spending $3,000 unless you actually were going to spend $3,000. Does that make sense? Don't spend money just to meet a credit card bonus. You only want to spend the money that you would normally be spending. Oh man, sorry, my voice is a little bit hoarse from last night. Um, uh, yeah, so that's one thing. And then those, those 50,000 points you can use to redeem. And then the, even like when you redeem points, there are ways to get more value versus less value out of those points. And again, go to those credit card training videos if you want more details on how to do that. Um, another thing is minimizing your lodging expenses. So staying with friends and family is the obvious choice when that's possible, but you probably don't have friends and family in every single city at every single program that you're interviewing at. So there are host programs that a lot of med schools and residency programs offer where you stay with students. Now, there are pros and cons to this. You're gonna save a lot of money. You are going to network really well. You're gonna ask questions from students who are actually there. You're gonna have really good insights. They're gonna give you tips. I remember at my, uh, so I went to UCSD for medical school and I stayed with a student host and um, I got so many good insights. He's like, oh, they really care about the free clinic. Make sure you bring that up and this and that. And like, it was very helpful, really great guy. Um, the, the downside though is that you may not be comfortable. So I remember that it was like a really tiny futon and I'm six foot one and my feet were just like hanging straight off. There was no chance of me fitting on that futon. Um, so it wasn't the most comfortable night's rest and granted I was what, 21 at the time or actually I was 20 when I was interviewing. Um, so I was just much more, my body was resilient. It wasn't that big of a deal to, to have one night of not as restful sleep. But um, you know, if you are really sensitive and you really need, like if you were doing back-to-back -back interviews and you were exhausted, I would prioritize getting a good night's rest at, at the, the last interview because if you are getting poor night's rest after a string of interviews, that's gonna really add up and culminate and manifest as possibly not being as sharp, not being as you know with it on your actual interview day. So pros and cons, um, and please be polite. I've heard horror stories from hosts about you know things that, uh, like you know, be polite, be, be, be a, be a be a respectable guest because these people are opening up their place to you to be helpful and um, they understand what it's like to be a broke pre-med or a broke med student. So yeah, be polite. Um, travel reimbursement, this is usually medical schools, um, but some residency programs also offer travel reimbursement. So this would be partial or full travel reimbursement for those who have the FAP approval, the fee assistance program approval through the AMC. And it's not guaranteed, obviously, but doesn't hurt to ask. Worst thing is that they say no, right? So um, it can save you a lot of money over the course of the interview season. And finally, start saving early. That's going to decrease the stress. Um, it's going to save you a lot of money in the long run because ideally you don't want to be racking up credit card debt because credit card debt is like insane, 15% APR, things like that. Um, and because of that really high rate and combat interest, that adds up to being much more expensive in the long term than if you didn't take out those uh, the credit card balance like that. Um, cool. So we just have, we're going to wrap this up. We'll do a couple questions real quick and thanks guys for, um, for swinging by. Taylor asks my heart, my hands start to sweat when I'm nervous. Will this make a bad impression when shaking hands with interviewers? Yeah. I mean, it's, if you have like really wet hands when you go for a, a handshake, it's, it's a little bit uncomfortable for the other person. So, um, what you may want to do is, I'm not sure how to actually best, maybe you have like, um, a napkin or something in your pocket. And then right before you walk in, you can like quickly dry your hands and then you walk in for the, the handshake. That's one thing that could work. Um, there might be some other tips on how to deal with sweaty palms, um, in interviews and such. So guys, thanks so much for joining. Um, this was fun. Let me know what you think. So we're, we're experimenting with these, inter these, uh, these live streams. This one, we were being a little bit more focused on just interviews and other ones. I'm a little bit more all over the place, just answering whatever questions you guys may have. But, um, this one has to be a little bit shorter. Sorry to cut it short guys, but really appreciate you joining and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good weekend.